Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our final College 101 series event for the spring semester. My name is Monique Bird, and I'm going to serve as your moderator tonight. Tonight is for our eighth grade students and parents, so get your pen and pencil ready, your paper, notepad, or your cell phone if you're using your notes because you are going to get some valuable information. First, let's go over a few housekeeping rules. Before we get started, I have to give a shout out to our partners. So everyone virtually clap for our partners to help make all of these events possible. We truly appreciate you. You may have questions and we want them. If you have questions during the session, please type them in the Q&A box. We will also have time at the end of the presentation for a live Q&A piece, so you can type questions during the session or you can wait until the end and post your question for us to answer. Live closed captioning is available. All you have to do is click the CC logo at the bottom right of your screen. Next up, I have the pleasure of introducing our presenter, Matthew Frit, and I'm sorry if I mess up this last name. <laughs> Correct me, Matthew. Matthew Fritzius. Correct, right on. Nice yes. job, Ms. Bird. I want to make sure I get it right. He is joining us from Broward. He serves as the curriculum supervisor for career technical adult and community education. He is going to bring you, like I shared, some valuable information and resources. So everyone get ready because I'm going to turn it over to Matthew. The floor is yours. All right. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone uh, for joining us this evening. I'm very excited to be here and uh, I'm hoping that you get a lot out of this presentation. There is a wealth of information um, out there regarding college and sometimes it can be really, really overwhelming, uh, but we we'll want to do our absolute best to make sure that you all feel comfortable uh, with the process with your uh, students starting, you know, their high school journey. All right. And so as Miss Bird uh, said, my name is uh, Matt Fritzius and I am a curriculum supervisor for Broward County Public Schools. So I previously served as a high school teacher for eight years and a high school assistant principal uh, for another five years after that. So I have extensive uh, experience and background in the high school space and I'm really excited to share kind of uh, my uh, knowledge and give you some overall tips, uh, you know, to help guide your student and help your family through um, the path from high school to a career. So just to tell you a little bit about what we're going to talk about this evening in this session, I'm going to give you some general tips uh, for high school success and really success in life for that matter. Uh, talk a little bit about how to find your path. Uh, there's a lot to sort through, lots of emerging career fields um, out there and it's ever changing. I want you all to know what your options are after you graduate from high school and what the requirements are to get those options. Uh, we want you to understand how you can really get a head start on college and career through different high school programs that exist throughout the state of Florida and want to showcase the opportunities that you can maximize while you are in high school. And also going to give you some big takeaways, um, you know, that kind of frame the overall approach uh, to this presentation. So I'm going to start with the big takeaways and end with the big takeaways. So what I hope you all get out of this is it is important to make a plan, but it's also important to understand that there is no one size fits all pathway for any individual. A pathway to a career looks very different from person to person, right? So not all careers are going to require four year and advanced uh, collegiate degrees, but all careers are going to require some type of post-secondary education, post-secondary planning. All right. And when you hear me say post-secondary, it's just a fancy term for after high school. All right. Really important as you enter high school to start strong. Freshman year can kind of make or break your dreams, your plans. 
And then it's also important to finish strong with your high school career. Uh, you will hear the term senioritis come up, right? So students at the tail end of their high school career tend to put in a little less effort in certain situations because they're just kind of at the end. So make sure you finish like you started very strong. Want you to get involved, right? Take advantage of the opportunities that are in front of you in the high school space, okay? So it's by getting involved that you are gonna give your best chance to succeed down the line. And foundational to success in life is building relationships. So the relationships that you are able to build throughout your high school career are going to continue to benefit you after you graduate. So with all that said, you know, where do you start when you're trying to determine, you know, what your path is? Well, you can start with these kind of general tips for high school success. So regardless of where your life path, your career path takes you, commit to excellence. So if you want to be successful and everyone is gonna have a different criteria for what success means, you need to commit yourself to excellence and do the best you can do. You know, So if your aspirations are to go to Ivy League school, you need to commit to excellence for your academic preparation. If you want to be the best welder that exists in uh, the Southeast United States and you want to be an underwater scuba diving welder, well, you need to commit to excellence in order to capitalize on that very lucrative career path. Establish relationships with the school staff and the support agencies that you are going to that you're going to interact with when you are in high school. So this goes for parents and for students, right? So you're going to have lots of individuals at your given school that are going to be able to assist you along the way. So we're talking about school counselors, we're talking about administrators, your teachers, you know, if there are community agencies that provide support for your school. You know, in Broward, we have an organization called the Children's Services Council. They fund after school programs um, and some of those exist at the high school level. So there are various different agencies that run those programs. So making sure you establish relationships um, with support staff, support agencies, really is going to ensure that you are getting the best guidance along this entire journey. You know, prioritizing your time, get a planner. If it, you don't like the, the, the actual physical hard copy of the planner, use your phone, but make sure that you are prioritizing your time starting early your freshman year, you know, and that should be based on the goals that you set for yourself and what you are trying to accomplish after you graduate from high school get involved so this can be in a variety of different aspects so there are extracurricular activities that you can get involved with you know there are different work-based learning um, opportunities you can get involved with throughout your your high school career that are going to benefit you we're talking about college applications and things you can put on that's great and also it's going to help make connections you know that you can leverage later on and I also want everyone to make sure you're maximizing your opportunities throughout high school. So I'm gonna present a variety of different kind of uh, opportunities that can really jumpstart that after high school uh, career path for you, but you need to make sure that you're taking advantage of all the things that are presented to you when you are in high school. So to start finding your path, you know, uh, traditionally, the question was asked of children, right? What do you want to be when you grow up? That has evolved. You know, those that question, you know, is kind of replaced with what problem do you want to solve? Because the jobs of tomorrow might not exist. So there are ever changing emerging industries, you know, across the United States and throughout the world that are going to continue to develop and you are going to have those opportunities. So do not set yourself necessarily on, you know, I want to be X, Y, or Z. Think about what you enjoy, what problems do you want to solve? And then going along with that is what type of life do you want to live? You know, what type of salary are you looking to attain? Do you value time more than you value, let's say the amount of money that, you, that, that you're, you're able to earn? So you need to be able to kind of balance um, these questions out to help you kind of find, you know, what makes sense and, and where your path is. So ways that you can find your path. 
There are different career exploration tools and platforms. My Career Shines is uh, run through a company called Cooter, and I do believe um, that it is a statewide platform that all students have access to where they can uh, help, it helps them to explore different careers. It helps them to uh, prep for workplace readiness, uh, create resumes, all types of different things on My Career Shines. A similar platform that we implement in Broward, we also use My Career Shines, but is Naviance. So they focus heav more heavily on uh, college searches and scholarship uh, searches that are out there. So um, if your school, your school district implements one of these or some other platform, make sure that you're taking advantage of these. Make sure that you are, you know, filling out or completing interest and skill inventories. So you can really see kind of based on your responses and, you know, what things you're interested on, what careers line up with those, right? And then you backtrack and figure out, hey, what are the steps that I need in order to secure that career? So once you kind of get an idea as to where you want to end up after you graduate from high school, you need to ask yourself, what needs to happen during my high school career and after high school for me to achieve my dream? You know, so encourage you to set goals and identify the steps towards achievement. So that could be things related to grades and you know the the your GPA that you want to uh, achieve in order to you know meet the thresholds for your dream college. Okay, this might be you know you wanting to acquire an industry certification in a field that you're really interested in seeking a career in. So I really love this quote uh, that a dream without a plan is just a wish. So we want you to dream big. I love the title of this session. I wanted to make sure it was down at the bottom of every slide because you all should be dreaming big, you know, but don't just wish for it. Develop that plan so that you can achieve your dreams. When we're talking about a, a path, right, the path through high school and the path to ultimately your career. I want you to think about it like a highway interchange, that there are multiple exit and entrance points on this path, and you need to be comfortable adjusting as needed. So just because you're set on one particular path doesn't mean that you can't get off at an exit ramp, do something else, or if you are, let's say, employed immediately after high school, it does not mean that you can't get on an on-ramp to get back on the highway to higher education. So make sure that you understand, um, you know, that, that these, it's really important to have the plan, to have the goals in place, but you need to understand that this is gonna adjust down the line, right? If you're looking at me as an eighth grader, what I aspired to do after I graduated from, uh, from high school and college, you know, it's very different than where I ended up. You know, so in, in eighth grade, I thought I wanted to be a physical therapist. So I actually went through high school still thinking that, got into college and started with the prerequisites and realized that that was not my area of interest. I ended up with a history degree and fell into teaching and then moved into educational administration. So lots of different paths. And I mean, look, I'm still on the highway. I'm in a PhD program and hopefully I'll be getting my doctorate uh, in the next two years. So, you know, lifelong learning on this, this, this path to your career but don't be afraid to deviate from the initial plan. Uh, it's important that you understand kind of what the three big buckets are after you graduate from high school, kind of what your post high school, post secondary options are, right? So the first one is enroll. So this could be at a four year college or university, could be at a two year uh, state college, could be a technical college or a trade school. So this is you, you know, pursuing continued education after you graduate from high school. You can enlist in the military, tons of, pathways to careers um, by enlisting in the military. And then after you graduate from high school, you have the option of moving directly into employment. And one of the things that I'm gonna talk about is the possibility of entering into apprenticeship programs. So there is a new aspect to that in the state of Florida that, they're really, that we're really promoting. And those are pre-apprenticeship programs that high school students can talk about, so or can enroll in. But I'll talk about that a little bit later um, in the presentation. So once you kind of understand your options and you do that career exploration, interest inventories, and you determine, hey, this is the school that I wanna go to because I need this degree, 
because this is the career that I want to enter into. Excellent. All right. You need to identify the grades that you need in order to achieve this desired career path. And so that is going to influence, right, whatever path you are on, it's going to influence what courses you take. So if you're really gung ho about being an auto mechanic, then hopefully the school that you're enrolling in has an auto mechanic program that you can get a jump start on, you know, that ASE certification and, uh, you know, uh, working at a dealership after you graduate or something along those lines. Um, I want you all to be aware that there are lots of programs and academies that exist throughout the state of Florida that align with some of these career goals. And you can really get a head start on that process by participating in those programs while you are in high school. And then finally, you need to consider what the financial implications of the plan are, right? So are you going to have to sink a whole bunch of money and accumulate a bunch of student debt in order to get this degree to make this salary, you know? Understanding kind of where you are as a family, right? And the things that you can do as far as financial aid and scholarships and savings and what that translates into your child's kind of post-secondary plan. So making sure you're taking those uh, financial implications into consideration really, really important um, at, at the beginning because, you know, everybody's heard about, you know, the kind of the crippling situation with college debt across the country. So certainly take these things into consideration um, kind of when, when uh, you are developing that plan. I wanted to talk just a little bit about GPA, grade point average. So may be familiar, may not be familiar. I'm kind of giving a, a really broad example here um, as to how the weighted versus unweighted GPAs work. Um, and this is specific to Broward. I honestly do not know if at the in different districts, if possibly the weight for an honors course or a college level course um, is different. But basically all uh, five of the letter grades are assigned a numerical value. So at level unweighted points, it is a four point scale. So if you earn an A, it is four points. A B is three and so on, right? Uh, uh, courses that are considered accelerated courses provide honors credits, okay? So that honors gives you, that honors course gives you a bonus point towards your GPA. So an A is now worth five points, a B is worth four, a C is worth three. For bonus points, most of the structures is that you need a, to earn a C or higher in order to get that quality point added to your GPA. If you earn a D or an F in the class, that uh, GPA uh, extra bonus point disappears. Now, college level courses, talking about courses like advanced placement, international baccalaureate, IB, dual enrollment courses, uh, career dual enrollment courses, workforce dual enrollment courses, all of those college level courses, at least in Broward, give you two weighted bonus points. So an A is equivalent to six points. So you need a 2.0 unweighted GPA in order to graduate. But colleges and universities are interested in both GPAs that you are going to, to end up with. OK, so you're going to have a weighted GPA that's just going to be um, all of the courses you took and that four point scale. So it, if you got straight A's, it doesn't matter if you had all college courses, all honors courses, all at level courses, it's going to be a 4.0. Where the weighted GPA comes in is when those bonus points come into play, okay? So colleges and universities, again, are going to be interested in both, okay? But they really, really are going to want to see high levels of rigor and very challenging courses that you take in high school. So a 4.0 straight A's in all at-level courses is great for your unweighted GPA, but that weighted GPA is not going to be at the at the level that the colleges are really seeking because the colleges and universities want to see that you're challenging yourself in the high school setting. So there are ways that you can get a head start. So uh, I had a pension for uh, career and technical education programs because that's currently uh, my role. So we're going to start with those. And also the reason why I want to start with those um, are because they are open access to all. 
I'm going to talk about some other programs, magnet programs, advanced academic programs that have certain criteria in order for students to qualify for participation. That is not the case with CTE accelerated pathways. So hopefully your school has CTE programs. They may even have CTE academies where a student enrolls in a particular pathway um, and an academy that they start from high school and finish you know, their senior year. So programs of study in CTE, they run the gamut. So when we talk CTE in the past, you would refer to it possibly as like vocational education or the trades. So those still fall under the umbrella of career and technical education. So talking carpentry, building trades, um, we're talking, you know, uh, the auto mechanics, welding, things like that. However, CTE also includes information technology, health science. It includes hospitality and tourism, culinary arts, business, finance, marketing, um, energy. So a lot of those emerging fields that I had talked about uh, previously fall under CTE. OK, so students in these programs get both academic, technical and workplace readiness skills. Right. So they might, uh, you know, participate in a digital video production program. So they are using Adobe products. Students are learning how to use Premiere Pro to edit, you know, videos. But that on top of that, they're also learning how to be successful in the workplace and really these life readiness skills. CTE accelerated pathways uh, open up opportunities for what's called work based learning. So this could be internships, summer internships during the school year internships could be job shadowing opportunities. OJT stands for on the job training. So your school might have an opportunity to earn while you learn towards the tail end of your high school experience. And then there are also career exposure events that are connected with CTE programs where you can learn about different career pathways and even get connected with local businesses looking to shape their future workforce. CTE programs offer a chance to earn industry certifications. So these are industry recognized credentials that high school students can earn for free because schools, school districts fund them in a variety of different ways. These industry certifications, some of them can articulate into post-secondary credits. So if you earn the Adobe uh, video bundle, that can correspond to three college credits in a video design uh, program in the state of Florida. These industry certifications can qualify you for scholarships. There are scholarships directly connected to industry certifications. And you know, those industry certifications make you more employable. We have some really, really great IT programs that I happen to be the, uh, the supervisor over in, in Broward. Um, but like we have students that are taking CompTIA certifications. Like these are the entry level certs that people in information technology have to bring to the table in order to qualify for employment and your students have an opportunity to earn those certs while they are still in high school. So magnet programs, you know, these are specialized curriculum that are offered outside of the school's normal attendance boundaries, right? So it's kind of a general uh, overall umbrella for different magnet programs. So they're normally theme based, so they could be something related to STEM or performing arts. So they vary based on district, based on schools. But some of these magnet programs really offer you a jump start on your college course attainment and also give you a, a leg up when it comes to admissions into these programs. So two that I'm going to talk about right now are the International Baccalaureate and the Cambridge programs. OK, so the International Baccalaureate considered pre-university course study and there are both the International Baccalaureate and Cambridge have either full diploma programs or you can kind of offer a la carte courses. So it's up to the school and the district how it runs, um, but these are really, really intense, rigorous college level courses that will prepare students for the most, most rigorous college 
experiences. So I can speak from personal experience. The high school that I worked at was an IB school. We had an international baccalaureate diploma program, okay? And so this diploma program allowed students to really immerse themselves in a rigorous curriculum that prepared them. You know, they would come back and tell us what a breeze their college courses were because of how prepared they were for IB. Now, I've heard similar experiences from students that have participated in the Cambridge program. So one huge selling point for e either of these programs is if you earn the IB diploma or the Cambridge diploma, you qualify for 100% Bright Future Scholarship, okay? If you don't go the full diploma route and you're doing the a la carte, or even if you don't qualify for the full diploma at the conclusion of participation in the program, the scores on the portfolio assignments or the end of course exams, the IB exam and the Cambridge exams, there are qualifying scores that can correspond to college credit. So you will submit your transcript with your scores right to your colleges and they will work with you to determine what classes you do not need to take because they will accept the score. AP programs work very similarly. However, um, they tend to not be this comprehensive full diploma program. OK, so there are 37 college level courses and exams across 22 different subject areas that are offered in high schools across the world through advanced placement. OK, so a wide variety, everything from, you know, uh, art courses to statistics, calculus, physics. All right. So AP course participation exposes students to rigorous coursework, provides them an opportunity to sit for an AP exam at the conclusion of the course. And then again, qualifying scores on those exams can articulate into college credits. The reason why I'm stressing these is because this is an opportunity for you to save money while your student is in high school. Whatever you can bank as far as these passing scores from IB, from ACE, which is Cambridge, or AP, those are money in the bank for you. That is opportunities that you do not have to come out of pocket to pay for courses. That is opportunities for you to not have to use your scholarship to pay for those courses. So, you know, highly recommend, especially if your desired path is one of a four-year college or university, get a head start through these advanced academic programs. Another option that some of your schools may have are dual enrollment programs. So we work with our state college, Broward College um, in Broward to offer dual enrollment for students. We also work with uh, Florida Atlantic University and Florida International University on dual enrollment. And now come to think of it, we also work with Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. So we have a, a large number of partnerships and what this allows is for students, they can actually start as early as sixth grade, it's like state statute, um, but it allows them to earn credits towards a certificate or a degree while they are still in high school. So you're simultaneously enrolled in high school, right, earning whatever credits that you need in order to graduate, but while also taking college level courses, you're actually enrolled in a college course through dual enrollment. One of the benefits of enrolling in dual enrollment is there is not a standardized exam at the end of the course like there is for AP, IB, and ACE. You need to pass the dual enrollment class in order to secure the credit. So might be a really good option for, for uh, some of you. And again, you have to talk to your schools to figure out what type of programs, what type of options they have. Something very closely associated with dual enrollment is workforce dual enrollment or career dual enrollment. So pretty much the same model where uh, you are duly enrolled in both high school and a post-secondary institution, but instead of being at like a, a four-year university, I also forgot that we partner with University of Florida and Florida Gateway College for additional dual enrollment programs. But anyway, um, we, you can, uh, instead of being enrolled in a university, 
career dual enrollment or workforce dual enrollment, you're enrolled in a technical college, a trade school, or a state college. So students that are enrolled in these pathways are completing industry approved, high skill, high wage technical programs. So students can earn certificates or come really close to earning those certificates prior to high school graduation. So what that means is if you're interested in that ASC automotive certification, hopefully you have a trade school or a technical college that you can do share time with and work towards that certification while you're still in high school. Um, one of the kind of new areas um, that the state of Florida is promoting and investing in um, are high school pre-apprenticeship programs. So parents traditionally, right, we think of um, those, those programs, those apprenticeship programs as, oh, they're like building trades, right? You're in construction, you're a construction apprentice. Now, the apprentice uh, programs, apprenticeships in building trades still exist and they're still really important. However, there are new fields that apprenticeship programs are being created and being delivered through. So we're talking about health science. There are certain, certain nursing pathways and programs that are following an apprenticeship model. Okay, there are information technology programs, cybersecurity programs that are following an apprenticeship model. And basically an apprenticeship is when you are hired by an employer and you are continuing your skill development through a structured process. And when you meet certain thresholds, you have specific bumps in um, your salary and your responsibilities, okay? So what happens with pre-apprenticeship programs are a high school, so Broward Schools has a pre-apprenticeship program. Right now, we are sponsored by Baker Concrete, uh, which is the largest concrete uh, company in the United States. They have all 35 locations across the country and they have a presence in South Florida. So they have a registered apprenticeship program in the state of Florida. They are sponsoring our pre-apprenticeship program. So these are students that are enrolled in building trades and carpentry programs, okay? So what happens with those students is they complete their program of study, their coursework through high school. Baker pushes in and does supplemental instruction. Through the completion of the coursework and that supplemental instruction, the students are completing a pre-apprenticeship program. The benefit of that pre-apprenticeship program is once they graduate, this gives them preferential hiring with that sponsoring agency. And it also allows that sponsoring agency to give the student credit towards their registered apprenticeship program from what they did in the pre-apprenticeship program. So let's say Baker's apprenticeship program is a three-year program, right? And there are various different bumps um, in salary, in job responsibilities every six months. Baker can look at the pre-apprenticeship program and say, you know what? Any student that completed the pre-apprenticeship program, we're gonna knock three months off of their registered apprenticeship program. So we're gonna start them at month four. So this allows students to get to those bumps in salary and job responsibilities at a quicker rate. So uh, just kind of a, a wanted to make sure I showcase this because this is a new wrinkle, something that um, is, is kind of on the, cut, the cutting edge of uh, you know, career preparation, talent development, and you know, workforce uh, pipeline development. And so hopefully, your schools, your districts are starting to bring those to the table because they really are gonna fill industry need and provide an opportunity for students right out of, of high school to apply those credits they earned and also to start making money immediately. Also don't wanna discount, going back to my, my, uh, my interchange analogy, right? Just because you enter an apprenticeship program, that doesn't mean that you are not participating in post-secondary um, higher ed pursuits, right? Some of these apprenticeship programs can dovetail really nicely with higher level um, advanced um, collegiate programs for managerial type roles in different industries. Okay, so let's talk about maximizing these opportunities. 
want you all to make sure you are taking advantage of the supports that are provided to you, to your students, to families while you are in high school. OK, so throughout your high school career, your experience, you have supports, the different resources, different people that are there for you. After you graduate, there could be people there can, can be people playing similar roles, but more than likely you're going to have to come out of pocket for those. I want you all to make sure you are capitalizing on the post secondary acceleration opportunities that are available in high school. So participate in advanced programming to launch your future, right? Bank as many college credits as you can through dual enrollment, passing AP exams, passing IB exams, Cambridge exams, right? But to participate in those CTE pathways that allow you to earn industry certifications that benefit you in your career, but then also allow you to apply them towards scholarships and, you know, post secondary education credits. All of those different opportunities those advanced programming options are free of cost to you while you are in high school now again i'm talking about public high schools in this um but like once you leave anything that you're doing is coming out of pocket or it's coming from your financial aid or your scholarships so really 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 want to make sure that you starting from freshman year are able to identify what types of accelerated programs are offered at your schools so that you can make informed decisions as to what classes you take, what pathways programs you enroll in, so it sets you up for success after high school. More stress on maximizing opportunities. Participate in career exploration and work-based learning. If your school provides opportunities for internships, take advantage of it. That gives you a great, great opportunity to further explore a career path. Find out if it's really where you want to be, you know, and if you determine that it's really want, where you want to be, that connection you make with your internship provider could be your future employer down the line, right? You could do an internship while you're in high school. You go off to your dream college and while you are on summer break, you're coming back home and you're continuing through college internship programs. So if you are provided those opportunities, make sure you do it. Participate in career exposure events. So if they're if they're face to face college fairs, career fairs, you know, hiring fairs, virtual exploration, whatever it is, try to immerse yourself in as much information as possible so that you can make informed decisions. And then I did not talk heavily uh, about scholarships because I know that those were for uh, kind of the, the current high school students, but make sure you keep that in the back of your mind. Don't leave money on the table. Complete the free application for federal uh, uh, student aid, right? P complete the FAFSA. Complete Bright Future Scholarship uh, applications. Apply, that should be for as many scholarships as possible. I missed the end there on the slide, but you know, you're gonna be able to back to that relationship piece which takes me to uh my final slide here for the big takeaways right so hopefully there's someone that you can connect with on campus that helps students search for and apply for scholarships could be a school counselor we have broward advisors for continuing education brace advisors in broward right maybe you have a career advisor so establish that relationship and make sure that you're getting as much information as possible OK, to review, create a plan, right? Explore, um, you know, your career paths, your interests, determine where you want to be in life, you know, create that checklist as to what success is for you. OK, recognize that there is no one size fits all path, right? There is no plan. There is no, you know, uh, college strategy, career strategy that's going to fit for everyone. So. Answer those questions, set your goals, keep track of your accomplishments, make sure that you're adhering to your plan, but don't be afraid to adjust as needed um, throughout you know, high school and beyond. Again, reinforcing, starting strong. Hi, I'm, so freshman year, sometimes eighth graders come on campus and it is just a culture shock for them. 
There is probably a lot more freedom than they're used to experiencing in the middle school setting. And sometimes they just students just they, they just they go they go too hard in the wrong direction and they put themselves in a really negative spot when it comes to grades and comes to their GPA from freshman year. And they spend the rest of their high school career trying to get back on track and get their GPA up to where they needed to be in order to accomplish their career goals. OK, so start strong. Make sure you're coming out of the blocks, ready to go when you start high school next year. And then just as important, finish strong. I have seen personally from my high school experience, colleges pull back acceptances from students because of poor performance during the tail end of their senior year. So just because you got accepted into your dream school at the start of your senior year, you need to make sure you finish strong so you maintain that acceptance. So get involved, you know, make sure participating in extracurricular activities, join clubs, play sports, right? Complete internships, work-based learning, all that great stuff, okay? The more things you can put on an academic resume, the better. And if you're striving to set yourself apart from other students in highly competitive college applications, then you need to show what does set you apart. And those getting involved in all those different activities give you an opportunity for that, all right? Make sure you're maximizing the opportunities that are presented in front of you. Leverage the, the chance to save money after high school with the opportunities to secure post-secondary credentials, credits while you are still in high school. And then again, foundational to all of this is building relationships. So parents, students, build relationships with the, uh, the support personnel that are there to help you along this journey. All right, and so that is gonna be it uh, for the presentation. I will stop sharing my screen and then we uh, will answer some questions. Phenomenal job, Matthew. I'm giving you all the virtual claps over here. <laughs> and I'm sure everyone listening to us feels the exact same way. What a phenomenal session, right? So many good nuggets. I have a couple of questions for you in the chat. And um, I'm going to just start from the top and work my way down. All right. You guys are still welcome to submit questions, so no worries. If I'm speaking and you think of something, go ahead and submit it. The first question, why is it important for students to be thinking of this information now in eighth grade? Yeah, it's a great question, right? So you're in eighth grade and you know, you don't know what you're doing tomorrow, let alone four or five years down the line. Why it's important to think about it is because of all of those opportunities to, to, to that you can take advantage of while you are in high school. So if you don't know about what the different programs are that exist across your district or maybe at the particular school you're going to, then you might fill out your course selection card, enroll in these courses that aren't ultimately going to get you to where you want to be. You know, so you need to take all that into consideration now. And again, back to that whole on ramp off ramp analogy, I'm not talking about that you are on a fixed course that you cannot leave from. But the more you know about kind of where you want to end up. All right, the better you're going to be at capitalizing on what you can do in high school to set yourself up for success down the line. Excellent. So this next question I love because I know we talk a lot about beginning with the end in mind, right? And so this question states, what are some more ways that students can learn about careers beyond what they see in their community? Maybe even some of those untraditional careers. Yeah, so a lot. So those those platforms that I referred to, the My Career Shines and the Naviance, um, you know, they provide a, a, a really good window into the different career paths that are out there. And you are a, a spot on there, Miss Bird. That you know, we tend to see kind of what's right in front of us, right. you know. But there is there's a wide variety of career paths and options that you know may not directly be in your district, in your community. So taking advantage of, there are there are lots of different platforms now 
that offer like virtual tours, virtual experiences. You know, as kids, you know, you can go on YouTube and learn all about uh, right. different careers that are there. And there are plenty of tutorials that are out there and kind of virtual job shadow videos where you can kind of get a real virtual firsthand look at some of the things that are out there. Awesome. And I just want to add, because you did mention so many valuable resources, that this session is being recorded. So if you want to go back and just kind of replay and, and skip around and see some of that information, it will be here for you guys. OK, so I have a question and this is for parents on the line. Um, how do you look at selecting a school or how would you suggest looking at selecting a school um, based on the school grades? OK, hold up. I'm reading this too fast <laughs> for parents on the line. How to select a school or look at school grades to find the best high school for their student to transition into or go into? Yeah, that's a that's an excellent question. So what I would recommend, and this is coming from my my personal experience as a high school teacher and a high school administrator, take a tour of the campus, go mm -hmm. visit the schools, contact someone at that high school and explain that, you know, my my students in eighth grade and we want to know kind of all that you guys have to offer. You're going to get a lot more insight as to actually what's happening on that campus, right with the programs than you are from any type of school grade or anything along those lines. So that that would be my recommendation. Um, talk to talk to to students that are currently enrolled in that school. Yeah. If there's people in the community that you know that have gone to that school, graduated from there, pick their brains about what, what what's going on. But I'm telling you from a school based administrator perspective, I wanted everybody to come to our schools and I'll, full disclosure, I, I worked at a school that was a C school. We were a C for the, the whole time that, that I was there, the 15, uh, 13 years that I was at that school. But that didn't mean that we did not have phenomenal programs there. We had a, a, an absolutely out of this world international baccalaureate program. We had the best aerospace engineering program in the state of Florida that's nationally competitive, right? So things like that, you're not gonna see on a Florida Department of Ed accountability report when you're just looking at at student achievement scores, you know, so I, I really recommend contacting the school, reaching out, seeing if you can get there on campus, seeing if you can meet, you know, the the school administrators, the counselors, the teachers that your students are going to be interacting with. And I'll, I'll be real blunt about it. If if the school's got it going on, they're going to invite you in whenever. You know, we we did not have a oh, we only do tours from nine to nine thirty on Mondays and Wednesdays. It was like, hey, you tell me when you want to come check out our school, and and I'll walk you through and I'll show you everything we have and answer any questions you have. And I know some districts might do like mission transition or academy nights. Um, the different advanced programs like ACE and IB. I know there may be some parents that struggle with trying to understand the difference, which is better for your student. I highly encourage along with Matthew to attend those events if they are available virtually or in person because you get a better idea of the program. And then of course, going back and having a conversation with your student to see which is the best fit. We got a few more questions, Matthew. You're doing an amazing. All right, okay. keep them coming, keep Time them coming. Check. OK, we're doing excellent on time. All right, so a question here. Even though this is an eighth grade audience, primarily we do want to continue to think about the end in mind. You mentioned scholarships and you talked a little bit about you setting yourself up for success, right? Because when you get in ninth grade, <laughs> That's when the grades start on that transcript and they do not disappear and also your resume, right? So one student wants to know how early can you begin volunteering? Um, I, I, I'm not sure about if this is like if your district requires hours towards graduation, then I would say as soon as that you're enrolling in high school, you can start in ninth grade. But you know, there's there's volunteer programs and things like that in middle schools if you wanted to get exposed to that. Um, but Ms. Bird, you, you mentioned something and I just want to kind of to, to follow up on it because I couldn't Wait. agree more that you're, you're talking about kind of knowing in ninth grade, you know, what the grades are that you need to attain in order to, right, get the scholarship that you're really right. seeking. And that relates to a lot of these programs that that I mentioned as well, right? So dual enrollment, career dual enrollment, workforce dual enrollment, APIB, things like that. 
there are likely going to be GPA thresholds, you know, maybe standardized test scores that you're going to have to meet in order to be able to participate in those. So yes. you need, to, if, if that's your goal, 11th, 12th grade to do that, you need to know what those benchmarks are in ninth grade so that you're doing what you need to do in order to qualify for it, right? Like, you know, you don't want to be at the end of your sophomore year and you're like, oh, I really right. want to do this dual enrollment program. And then you realize, oh, I got to bring my GPA up, you know, half a point in order to be eligible, yep. you know? So as, as much as you can go in knowing that immediately in, in ninth grade, the better situation you're going to be in. Absolutely. Um, question from a student, what would look better on a college application, AP or dual enrollment courses? So it's a it's a that's a really good question, um, and it it kind of depends. Uh, I'll defer to to anyone else on the line that 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 wants to <laughs> chime in, but um, you know it, it it really depends on on where those those courses are being taken, right? So right. if you if you're doing if you're doing dual enrollment, uh, you know, virtually with University of Florida, let's say or something like that, okay. Uh, a, a higher end college or university is going to look more favorably on that. Then let's say if you were doing dual enrollment at Broward College, which is a state college, okay? Um, if you take AP, exam, uh, uh, AP courses and you pass those exams and earn those scores, again, that might be looked upon more favorably than dual enrollment at a state or a community college. I think too, Matthew, just to piggyback, it really does, you said it, it depends on the student, right? Because you have to keep in mind with those dual enrollment courses, that is also the start of your college transcript and GPA. So at the same time, you know, is this a rigor you're ready for and prepared for? Looking at those syllabus, looking at those requirements versus the AP, you know, is this something that you can really handle? Because you want to make sure you go in knowing what is expected because it can really affect you in the end if you don't really do as well in those courses. Um, so I definitely agree with you. It's up to the student and the parent to have that discussion as what is best. Few more questions, few more questions. If I am doing a dual enrollment course or any other program like IB or AP, if I am taking a college level class such as math or history, do I have to take the high school class as well? Or does one class meet the requirements for both? Excellent question there, Excellent. you know, and I think I might have confused when I said some stuff, you know, in, in the presentation, but uh, no, you're not going to have to take, right? So if you're taking a, a college level U.S. history class, you're not going to have to take the high school uh, U.S. history class uh, as well. So those dual enrollment classes, the advanced academics like the AP, the IB, the, the ACE, those courses qualify for the high school courses. So they're, they're going to meet those high school graduation requirements. You basically get a two for one deal and I yes. like deals. <laughs> I like clearance, I like free and I like deals like BOGO at Publix. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I don't see any more questions for you in the chat, Matthew. You did a phenomenal job. I'm so appreciative that I was able to attend myself because I got some nuggets to take back to counselors and professionals in my district. So thank you. I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. We hope that you are inspired to reach higher and meet those goals that you have. And remember, begin with the end in mind. The planning starts yesterday, okay? So have an amazing evening. We thank you guys so very much, and we look forward to seeing you at our next series. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night.